Welcome to Hood Champion Boxing and Sports. In boxing, you find a way to win or you find a way to lose. They got them, y'all. They got Deontay Wilder. Secret Society got a hold of him. And they have ruined him. Or did Deontay Wilder ruin himself? Or is it like a good fried rice? A combination. Now listen, we know this whole story about Mark Breland. But Wilder feels Mark Breland spiked my water. Not many of us buy that. Okay, but then you look at Malik Scott. Wilder felt he was the man with uh, the man for the job. Malik Scott got the boxing brain supposedly. Malik Scott says, "I know what to do here. I can't put it out in the ring. Wilder can. So I'm the brain. He's the body." Well, what happened to that? Because it sure as hell didn't show up last night. Now, the secret society. I truly believe that exists. Um. A lot of times I have fun with the whole topic about the secret society, but I truly believe there's a lot of things that happen behind the scenes we're not aware of. But if you just pay attention, it's called optics. You're gonna see some things that make you say, what was that? And when you have that kind of moment, stop and start to peel the layers back until you can make sense of what you're seeing. And when you can't, you better believe there's a reason for that. Now, this is what someone passed by me. Because Deontay Wilder had knocked out Malik Scott, right? Malik Scott was an opponent. Wilder tranquilized him. I still don't think that shot landed, but, you know, hey, that's a whole other conversation. But the person suggested that Malik Scott may have some resentment towards Wilder, and Malik Scott, this is Malik Scott, his way of getting back at him, which is making Wilder think, that he only has to depend on that right hand and slowly taking away the things that enable Wilder to get that right hand off. And that Malik Scott, in a weird way, smiles after every fight because he's happy to see how he's slowly and methodically breaking Wilder down because Malik Scott is a city slicker, fast talker, and Wilder is a country boy who's as country as a dozen brown eggs. And when I heard that, I said, you know what? Anything's possible. It makes for a good conversation. Now, with Mark Breland, it's no secret that there may have been some trouble in paradise where Wilder just wouldn't even talk to the man. Um, didn't want to do anything Breland recommended. But you can see the little bit that he did listen to and the instruction he adhered to, Wilder was a uh, formidable force in the boxing ring just with the jab right hand, clean up left hook. That's boxing one-on-one. And Mark Breland had a similar frame to Wilder. He was smaller, but still tall, lanky with the big right hand. He taught Wilder his way of fighting. And Wilder had a lot of success with it. But what we saw last night, with Wilder against Parker. Yeah, Parker is a, is a good fighter. They studied film. They were prepared to take away the right hand from Wilder. But what we saw last night was a product of Malik Scott, Malik Scott, so-called, you know, intelligence and, and, and mastermind, because that shit was horrible, absolutely horrible. Now, if you say, damn, Hood, do you think Malik Scott would do him like that? You know, he and Wilder are supposed to have this bromance, the brothers, Wilder has Malik Scott's mother's birthday, Malik Scott has Wilder's mother's birthday, they have all these things in common. You know, what do you really think? I'm gonna tell you this, well, let's just take a look at when Malik Scott got involved with Wilder, how has Wilder performed? Don't tell me about the opponents put in front of him. Just how has he performed? And I just think we've seen him uh, just, although it's only the Tyson Fury fight, Hellenius fight, and then this fight now, but what we've seen is Wilder just kind of deteriorate. And in the Hellenius fight, he started off with the same kind of circular stuff, do a jab to the midsection, got tranquilized, stumbled back, said, uh-oh, this man hit counter me, and Wilder was on his back foot. Hellenius was coming forward stupidly with his hands down and Wilder just happened to, to hit him, right? And Hellenius was up. But you could see then that that crap Wilder was doing, at, at least for me, I was like, that's not the answer. And then when he came in the ring with, uh, here with Joseph Parker, he not once did he try to step to Parker. Not once did he even try to jab. Not once did he try feints. He did was nothing. He was doing nothing. Every, the stuff that we saw him do that people thought was basic was gone out the window. 
So with Malik Scott, I said, let me try to understand how Malik Scott, as a trainer, can be happy with seeing that his brother, his trainee, how can you be happy with seeing Deontay Wilder perform like that? How can you come out there smiling? What are you smiling about? I'm going to tell you from experience. I had subordinates underneath me, trainer, trainees. Award ceremonies. They'd be battling against people from like five different organizations. And, you know, I always knew there was some shady business that, that went on. A lot of times, if, you're per, if you had a number one uh, 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 nominee, they would team up on you and to make sure they marked your guy or girl down to where someone else, the person they wanted to win. And then what you see happening every quarter is, let's say, unit number one, two, three, and four. They get together to make sure unit number one guys wins. Then unit number two, the next quarter, units one, two, three, and four, they team up, make sure unit two's person wins. Then the, the, the third quarter and fourth quarter, three and four win. And if you're in unit number five and you don't have uh, uh, people there that's looking to work out for you, you just kind of in the breeze. So I know that there's some foul play. But my thing is, whenever my guys lost, I never was speaking highly of the, the, those nominees that won. Now, surely, it sure as I wasn't shaking nobody's effing hand because I knew the foul play and the bullshit that goes on. So when I see Malik Scott over there shaking Tyson Fury's hand, talking about um, Wilder did some good stuff, he was great, uh, just Fury was better. When he goes on, man, I'll tell you exactly what he said, because it, it really uh, annoyed me, man. This is what really annoyed me right here. Um, I'm going to tell you, it, it just really, really pissed me off. Let me read to you. Let me read to you. Then, I, then I, I'll, I'll identify it. He goes on. This is what Fury was talking about. This whole thing with, with uh, Scott was talking about this thing about Fury after Wilder and him fought. He said, in my opinion, you got to give Fury the credit of a good chin and being mentally strong enough to get up both of the knockdowns uh, and it came at the end of the round. Also, so when Deontay uh, would go to finish, Fury would slide and evade how he's good at doing clinching and then the round would be up. I think that any problem that we had as far as game plan, as far as technicalities, anything Deontay tried that didn't work, I believe it's just because Fury, he off, it's just because of Fury. Listen, listen to this now. I think that any problem that we had as far as a game plan, as far as technicalities, anything Deontay tried that didn't work, I think it's just because of Fury. Now that is Malik Scott sitting there blaming Deontay Wilder and saying that De Tyson Fury has a better brain than Malik Scott and Deontay Wilder. Deontay Wilder's in there fighting. You, your trainer is saying anything that we Deontay Wilder tried, it didn't work because of Fury. Because of Fury, so that means Wilder didn't stand a chance. Wilder never stood a chance against Tyson Fury because when he would get in there and things would get a little tricky, he'd come back to his corner and Malik Scott didn't have an answer. Because Malik Scott, although he had a lot of professional fights, he never got to that elite level. He was just more or less a, a, a glorified sparring partner and a guy who, when, when he finally stepped up, he just he failed the test. Mark Breland, champion, uh, amateur pedigree, Olympian. Mark Breland was the truth. That's why you see him with Deontay Wilder, even when he was in there with Luis Ortiz. You seen him able to do things and to be able to figure things out because Luis Ortiz is a more complex puzzle than Joseph Parker because Mark Breland knew this is what this person's doing. This is what I need you to do, Wilder. Malik Scott couldn't convey that to him. But when you go back to what he said here after the Fury fight, I just read it. I think that any problem that we had as far as a game plan, as far as technicalities, anything that Deontay tried that didn't work, so he was trying the things that Malik Scott was telling him. I believe it's just because of Fury. So now Wilder goes into a fight with Joseph Parker, right? With Tyson Fury. Tyson Fury and the team, the same team sitting there advising Parker. Malik, Wilder had no chance in hell. And the thing is, Malik Scott made him look worse. Then he didn't at first. You know why Wilder looked the way he did in that third fight? 
It's because he still had Mark Breland's ways in him. Jay Diaz ways in him. That's why he looked like that in that third fight. This thing about Malik Scott, what we're seeing now is a product of Malik Scott shedding all the instruction of Mark Breland and saying, hey, this is how I want you to do it. The secret society gave me marching orders. Yes, sir. Water, this is what I need you to do. Forget about all that stuff you learned. I'm going to make sure that you have patience. You have your timing on point. You line the person up. You know just when to throw your punches. We're not going to waste shots. You're going to get behind on the scorecards. You're going to lose a decision to someone that you should have knocked out. And now no one in boxing takes you serious. Because now I, Malik Scott, have got you on hallucinogens. Because Malik Scott's got an OnlyFans page. Malik Scott is out there, you know, I don't know what Malik Scott's doing. But Malik Scott seemed to be a free spirit and got Wilder going that direction. But maybe Wilder's always been like that. But if that's your brother, how you, and he's a professional fighter, and you want him to become a two-time world champion, what the hell are you doing being okay with this man doing 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 hallucinogens? And you doing that shit with him. What, what are y'all doing? How's that your friend? I'm telling you, growing up, man, even to this day, but when I was younger, man, Wow, wild guy, man. Into all kind of shit. You know what I'm saying? With a chip on my shoulder. But I had some friends that were, you know, into other things. And, you know, I remember I, I, I'll give you a, a story without getting too specific. But I had a friend who had to go and do something. And he asked me, hey, this and this happened yesterday while I was in the city. X, Y, and Z. Yo. Come back out there with me today. I got to do X, Y, and Z. I was like, all right. That was my friend. So we went out there. And um, fortunately, uh, what we were looking for, uh, we didn't come across it. And uh, the X, Y, and Z didn't happen. Then another time, but I remember coming back, I was like, that happened for a reason. Because if X, Y, and Z would have took place, it could have been something crazy. So another time, there was something going on. And they were like, hey, X, Y, and Z. And I was like, nah, I Y'all on your own. Because I just knew that that wasn't going to end. It wasn't going to end well. And um, I just knew I couldn't go back to my to my pops and be like, hey, I got uh, calling him from, you know, some damn police precinct. You know what I'm saying? But the first time we went out there, man, it was, you know, it was going to get crazy. But the second time, I remember I was like, no, nah, I can't do it. And I even told him, you know, y'all need to leave that alone. If you out there messing around and you get yourself caught up in something, man, you just got to eat that. Leave it alone. You were wrong. And uh, you know, they were a little sour, but you know, we talk about it now and laugh. They're like, you were right. Um, but again, you got to have that friend that's willing to tell you, like, nah, man, this, this ain't it. This ain't it. This, we shouldn't be doing this. Like me, I've never smoked weed. But I have friends who used to smoke cigarettes, black and miles, those things called beanies, 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 whatever them little bullshits were. And um, I'd be like, yo, man, what are you smoking that shit, man? That shit destroys you. You know what I mean? And they'd be like, ah, oh, right, Rashid, um, they'd be like, oh, man, you always messing with us, man. You always messing with us, man. I'm like, y'all leave that alone, man. You know, but I used to take a little drink, so I'm like, yeah, take a little sip. But leave that alone, man. That kills you. And uh, and I had one friend, he stopped. He, all that new ports and all that, man, put that crap down. Because he was, we were around each other all the time at the gym training, and, I, and that wasn't my style. I was like, yo, put that down. I said, even the alcohol, I said... Get on these honeys. That was my thing. Yo, chase the girls, man. What you doing? Spending time with these dudes, smoking, being foolish, man. You need to be here cuddled up with some female, man. And, and and But we were able to talk. And, you know, sometimes you can get through some. Some of them you can't. But if I had a friend who was out here with the opportunity, like what Wilder had yesterday, to go on to make 40 50 $100 million, no way in the world I'd have been okay with him, especially over there. If you notice, Wilder had a cup in his hand at almost every interview. In almost every interview. He had a cup in his hand. So I don't know if he was drinking that stuff over there. I don't know. But what I will tell you is, I don't. I just think Malik Scott, if Malik Scott really resents him, this is a brilliant way to get at Deontay Wilder without him knowing it. Um, and for that reason, and this is just a conversation, if something like that's going on, that's, that's horrible. But I don't put nothing past anybody, man. 
You know what I'm saying? Deontay Wilder is a country boy. Malik Scott's a city slick. That's why he's always talking. Talk, 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 talk. But I would, I would hope that if Wilder does return, that he finds the strength. And hopefully there's people, because look, I'm sure there's got to be people around Wilder. Maybe his girl would be like, you, you may not want to hear this, but I don't think, I don't think he's helping you. Maybe Wilder looks at it and says, that ain't it. Hell, Wilder can go back to look at his first fight against Tyson Fury. And look at this fight here against Joseph Parker. You know, and, and see the difference. Look at his fights against Bermaine Stavern, against Luis Ortiz. You know, and look at this fight. There's a huge difference. A huge difference. But that being said, man, I don't know nothing about Mark Breland and the, 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 the bottle, spike water, the juju. Not really sure what Malik Scott is doing, except I think he isn't the trainer for water. I think he's more of a cheerleader, which he needs to play his role. But some people say they feel like the secret society got water. Some people feel it was Mark Breland. Uh, listen to what's his name, uh, Malik Scott. He's thinking about his employability. Water can't fight forever, and his his end may be coming. His end may be coming uh, coming here real soon. And I need to make sure I can still go out here and train people and some of the biggest names in boxing who get the biggest payday so I can get me a, a nice chunk of change in my pocket. Because I just don't see how, if this is your brother and he's losing, and you you smiling and you happy and how you can come out there and praise another fighter for what they're doing so brilliant. I thought you had the brilliant mind. Nah, y'all should be sitting back popping bottles and happy because you had the brilliant mind. You, you, you can't outthink anybody because you haven't fought at that level. It's just, it's just, to me, horrible. And this thing about praising Tyson Fury and praising everybody, I just, I just, I just don't, I just don't agree with it. And if Wilder said he feels like there was some cheating going on, when Malik Scott comes out here and says, you know, um, that he feels that Deontay Wilder uh, has reason to believe that he was cheated, and obviously there were some photos, there were some videos of people sending him things. And uh, he feels that that's Wilder's given proof. But he'll never come out and say that he he believes Wilder was cheated. He'll never say that. And that's the thing about Malik Scott. If you watch him, he's very particular in what he says because he wants to make sure that there's life after, for him as a trainer in boxing, after Deontay Wilder. But I'm going to tell you right now, he may have stuck a nail in his coffin with that performance Wilder had. I think he, he, if he wants to stay in boxing, he better come and turn Wilder around, at least in one fight, and have him do something miraculous. Because right now, I think the ship has sailed for Malik Scott, and I think for Wilder, I just think Wilder's just too caught up. I, I think he didn't finally found drugs, and he can't get over himself. He, he, he sounds like an addict. You know what I mean? I'm not saying that to, to be disrespectful. Like, he sounds like a junkie. Who the fuck? Like, who loses a fight? And come talking about, yeah, and I found the, the, uh, the, 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 whatever the hell it's called, ayahuasca. That's what you, you grateful for finding the drug? Yo, man, at least Scott brought that dude down. Water, water, there ain't no more bronze bomber. Ain't no more bronze bomber. It's gone, people. All this bomb squad, it's gone, people. It is gone, people. Water, water let me down. I ain't gonna lie. Man, uh, don't get me wrong. He, he, he made plenty of money in the sport of boxing. Seemed to have everything taken care of outside of the sport. Uh, beautiful family. He's a family man. All that's beautiful. But to come out here now, right, with all these people who are looking at this guy, forget if you lose. Nobody care if you lose. All these people looking at you, my man, and you here promoting a, a fucking hallucinogen? Hallucinogen? That's Malik Scott, man. But Wada's a big man, so he gotta own that shit, but that's what you're gonna come out here and be promoting, man? Got young people looking up to you. You got a, a statue. You, till this day, people in Africa, Deontay, Deontay Wilder, 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 Wilder. Everybody loved this man. That's what you're going to come out here and talk about? Man, you should have kept that to yourself, man. 
Don't know what's going on over there in that camp, but I tell you what, they need some gray hair in that camp. They need some Mark Breland in that camp because the way this, this, that, ship, that shit is going down fast. And Malik Scott can't save it. And Walter, he don't seem to be able to save himself. Yo, I'm in the breeze.